Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're watching episode 4 from season 4 of Snowpiercer. The title is North Star. Now we're all caught up current day. So we're seeing back and forth between the train and New Eden, Snowpiercer, Big Alice. We're bouncing all over the place. Come on, check it out with me. Oh, oh Jeff Shaw, bringing joy to every heart. Star. Episode 4 starts with Josie reminiscing about being in the tale in a flashback, which seems like the early days um, of the tale, maybe in the first few years of them being tailies. Leighton and Josie are patching up a fellow tailie. It's unclear if he's going to make it or not. They patch up the tailie. He's going to be all right. Dubbed over is Josie making comparisons between the North Star and Leighton. Back aboard Big Alice, current day, the team is planning on how to board Snowpiercer. Leighton wants to conduct an extraction mission, go in, get Liana, and get out. He wants to do an extraction, not a revolution. Josie closes the intro, saying, En route to Snowpiercer, 879 cars strong. Back in New Eden, a storm is raging. Egg Seg has lost power and crops are failing. Sykes hears an explosion in the distance. Josie joins Alex at the helm of Big Alice, and they discuss how the manual override will work when they dock. Alex can hack it remotely after they connect a patch cable. That's actually the easy part of the plan. They can't actually connect, like dock with Snowpiercer, so Leighton and Josie are going to have to jump from train to train. I find this scene kind of out of place. What happens next? Ruth and Leighton are like on watch for Snowpiercer. It wasn't made evident in the scene before that they've caught up with them. Only that they're planning what to do when they do catch them. But in this next scene, they're waiting, like in describing what they're going to do. And then Snowpiercer's just there. With stealth mode activated, the team is getting into position to jump from car to car. They don't think Snowpiercer spotted them yet. As the plane is about to commence, uh, the Admiral makes contact over the radio, blowing Big Alice's cover. Radio conversation takes place between Leighton and the Admiral. Uh, the Admiral wants to know why he's there, and Leighton isn't playing coy, and he demands to be given back his daughter. Anton denies being involved in Liana's disappearance. He invites them over for breakfast, or if Leighton wants, they can do things the hard way. It's growing ever more evident that Anton wants them to dock. He wants Big Alice to dock with Snowpiercer. That's what he's really after. And it's not really hidden. Like everybody, kind of Ruth and Alex, they kind of pick it up right away. Leighton shuts down all the talking, storms off, and basically refuses to talk to the Admiral till he can come up with a better plan. Back in New Eden, it's questions galore. Uh, Javi's being assaulted by a mob, mob verbally. And Roche has to step in to save him. Javi's being very realistic about like how much power they have and how long they can survive without Big Alice. And it's really pushing everybody to the edge. So Roche steps in. He says these things are just the hypothetical bads that can happen. And he asks everybody to rally together to keep the town safe. Leave this alone. So if you're out there, you happen to be out there, you happen to be up in the hills, just keep your eyes peeled, okay? I promise you, we will get through this. Uh, Sykes tries to confront Javi. It seems like there might be a romance blooming there, and Sykes wants in on the council. Most of the council members are away or dead, and she thinks that would be helpful, seeing as she already looks after the town's food supply. She thinks people don't like her, and they won't let her on the council because she was a Wilfordite. Give me a heads up. If you guys are stretched thin, maybe you need some help up there. I'm just saying, four of the six council members no, no, are no, gone. No, 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 listen. Back on Big Alice, the plan is uh, starting to come together. What our team is going to do is agree to dock to come over and do things the easy way. Um, and when they get close, they're going to fake a technical issue. They will be close enough that Leighton and Josie can make the jump onto the next train. And they can infiltrate get Liana, and by the time they're ready to connect, be there to escape. 
a slight hiccup occurs when they are about to commence the plan as Josie hears over the radio Miles' voice. She lets it slip that they're coming for them. Both sides are taken off the radio right away. Even though this slight hiccup occurs, Anton agrees to allow them to get into docking position. This is Milius. Who am I talking to? This is Layton. Just seeing if your invitation still stands. Anton briefs his men about uh, Big Alice docking with Snowpiercer, where he wants men and what to look out for. Nima attempts to discourage Anton from using the gas. Nima's now calling it the Gemini variant. So this is some of the most information we've gotten so far about this black gas that's scarring everybody up and they have to breathe it in all the time. Has a nice ring to it. Well, you can't use the Gemini variant that your people installed. It's, it, it's too toxic. We get a nice peek into the Admiral's past uh, when he sits down at his desk. There's a picture of him and a woman, it's probably him and his wife, showing that he had a life before this deep freeze and he might even have been a normal guy. Nima questions Anton's tactics in front of his men and he doesn't really like this. He gets frustrated with Nima and says that he's giving Leighton false hope so that he'll connect the train and fall into the trap. Anton's actually pretty pissed with Nima because he would question him in front of his men so he does another power move and he makes him do push-ups in front of everybody. Nima's like a chemist and they play him off as a very like frail guy so he's only able to do three push-ups and Anton makes fun of him the whole time and belittles him at the end when he can only get three done. Ben and Till are cooking it up in the hot box and they are struggling to make any type of conversation, talking about favorite movies and favorite vacations. Nima surprises them and us, the audience, by getting to the hot box and asking Ben how he can deactivate the trap. Ruth and Alex are at the helm of Big Alice as Josie and Leighton prepare on the roof to take Snowpiercer. Nima attempts to shut down the trap, but is stopped by one of Anton's masked men. Ruth lays the masterminded excuse on Anton. He buys it, but is upset with them. So he pumps the brakes on the train, causing them to bump into each other. Will that be all, Admiral? Yes. Thank you. Smart asses. Pump the brakes, give them a love tap. Let them know I'm done playing. The trains are too close. Dr. Pelton arrives in the last car, just in time to distract our masked man from Josie and Leighton landing on the roof of the car. It's an egg seg car, so it has like a glass roof. So she is there. She's not supposed to be there. So the guy escorts her out of the area. And the whole time it's like, you know, in the background, you can see Josie and them sneaking across the roof. Pretty ingenious, Dr. Pelton. Leighton and Josie make it in through a cold lock. Big Alice, we made it. Great. Back in New Eden, Roche is helping his daughter close up the market. She's worried about him and he's worried about her. He says he's so upset with himself because he allowed Leanna to be taken on his watch. Oz then approaches them with findings. Roche, Javi, and Oz are all stunned to be looking at a human hand. You want me to keep my eyes peeled? So it is. Okay, a few questions come to mind, starting with... Javi freaks out. Anton notices a cold lock was opened. Miles tries to pass this off as a error code or something that's not really important. How long ago did that cold lock open? Uh, that's nothing. Just an error message. Anton's on to Leighton, so he calls Big Alice. Uh, and asks Ruth to speak to Leighton. Ruth is unable to provide Leighton, so Anton, being this admiral and a good strategic planner guy, he knows that Leighton's on Snowpiercer. Anton removes Miles from the helm and has Ben dragged back up from the factory cars to lay some. In these next few scenes, it's evident that Josie was injured when they jumped from train to train. Her and Leighton are sneaking around with Dr. Pelton. Um... The Admiral has separated children 
from their parents to incentivize the workers to keep working hard. So they'll have to go up train to first class to find the kid car. Nima begs the guard to reconsider reporting him to Anton and even offers him help for his pain. He pulls out a canister of gas to hook up to the soldier's breathing apparatus. He says it will, it act, it'll act like a painkiller. In fact, it ends up knocking him out. Thank you. Back in New Eden, Sykes and Javi are doing an autopsy on the hand, or a necropsy, whatever it is, and they find an RFID chip in the hand, signaling to us and them that this is somebody from Snowpiercer. So it's probably somebody we know. Or now we have a murderer amongst us. Leighton and Josie are spotted in the market. The uproar of everybody being happy with their return notifies the peacekeepers that they're there and they have to separate to avoid being captured. Ben returns to the engine and Anton wants insider information on Big Alice, specifically how to uh, activate the docking mechanism remotely. Ben tells him that this isn't possible and Anton's pretty frustrated with him. Anton tips his hand to Big Alice, revealing he knows Leighton is on his own train. He orders Ben to hit the gas on Snowpiercer, forcing Big Alice to accelerate to keep up. The theater. I know Leighton is aboard Snowpiercer. I'm telling you this is a courtesy. If you want to see him again, then you better keep up. Josie makes it down to the hot box and lets Till out. Now it's them two against the peacekeepers. Nima is almost caught by another peacekeeper, but is saved by Leighton. Till and Josie make it to the kid car. They search, but do not find Leanna, but, but Josie is reunited with Miles. Their reunion is cut short, and Josie is captured by Anton's men. Nima reveals his plan to Leighton. His plan is to retrofit a car to fire missiles. They can take the train all over the world and create an integrated web of hotspots using their chemicals. While he's explaining his plan to Leighton, it's revealed that he's been holding down the transmit button on a walkie-talkie, revealing his position to the peacekeepers. Leighton fights a couple peacekeepers and gets away. Ruth and Alex must make a choice to speed up and follow the train. They do this, but their chances of getting back to New Eden are getting shorter and shorter. They're turning. Where did this track come from? New track? Audrey, she said that they made stop somewhere. Ruth's quote is, into the belly of the beast. Into the belly of the beast we go. Josie is taken to Anton in the engine car. Anton doesn't have Leanna, but can take them to her. So I think we're supposed to believe that she's in Djibouti. It was one of Anton's men who took them because how they were dressed and everything. Anton then reveals that he wants to trade Big Alice for Leanna. I can, however, take you to her. The terms are simple. Let's trade. Liana for Big Alice. Back in New Eden, Roche and Oz are looking around the area where Oz found the hand earlier. Oz has one of his attacks, and he has these attacks where it sounds like he can like hear radio, so, you know, people in the distance talking on radios. And when he comes out of his attack, Roche is gone. This is where we end the episode. We're led to believe now that Roche has disappeared. Uh, Josie's being held by Anton and Leighton's still loose on the train somewhere. Okay, I want to take a little time here at the end to speculate. So I want to know where Wilford is because we're supposed to get him this season. He's in the poster and stuff. So are we just going to get flashbacks to Wilford or maybe Wilford is in Djibouti? Maybe the peacekeepers have already found him. It'll be really interesting to see how they reveal him. I don't think he's just been in a track scaler under suspension this whole time. That would be pretty lame. Well, that was episode four of season four of Snowpiercer, entitled True North, or North Star. No, North Star. It's entitled North Star. And... It was a pretty good episode. We got a little more action, a little more plot development, not just rebuilding this world that we've known to come and love. And if you made it this far, try and do all the channel stuff, the liking, the subscribing, the commenting, and 
This has been the Jeff Sharp Show. Thanks for watching. Oh, oh Jeff Sharp, bringing joy to every heart. Oh, oh Jeff Sharp, I'm bright and charming star.